Hey everyone, Dan at Ochoco Bushcraft. Well, this is gonna be the final episode on the last ditch survival kit. If you go back to the very first episode on this, part one, you will see that our shelter kit consisted pretty much of just an SOL heat sheet and some cordage. And that was because of the limited space. So I do have along some extra tools with me today, uh, but I wanna show you how you can use the items from just your kit and what you can find in the forest to make a really nice little emergency shelter with just your basic last ditch kit. Now I am, I'm cheating a little bit. I'm using my hand hatchet this morning. That's not part of the kit. Uh, the SE6 is, and I could do the same thing with it. Just a little more work but I'm just cleaning up the branches on this pole. So I had my hand hatched along, I wanted to go ahead and use it. But just basically, I found a fallen tree, a small fallen tree, and I'm delimiting it. And I'm gonna put it up between two trees together and using our SOL heat sheet and uh, some carved tent pegs, just make a simple lean-to shelter, quick, easy, something that you can use uh, to stay warm and stay alive with your last ditch kit. So kind of the, the tricky part is going to be terrain. If you don't have tree, two trees close together, you can do the same thing basically with just one tree, taking your, find a, some kind of a small fallen limb, uh, dead tree branch, dead tree, whatever you can find. Worst case scenario, you got to use your pocket saw on your Swiss Army knife. It's a lot of work, but it can be done to saw something down. And you can lean it against a tree and just do a basic lean-to like this with your reflective blanket here, you underneath, debris for insulation under your body, and a fire in front. So that will work just fine. I happen to be fortunate enough to find two trees close together. So I'm gonna put this up between those two trees So for balance points, I have some branches sticking out on both trees. It's not gonna hold for very long, but it'll hold me long enough to tie this up. Now, as part of that kit, we have a limited amount of cordage. We don't have enough to lash. So again, the simplest option would be to just take this pole lean it up against a tree and uh, you know, basically pyramid style or debris hut style. Use my reflective blanket on one side and a fire in front. But since I had these two trees close together and this one, as you can see, had a bunch of dead uh, branches sticking out, I thought I'd take advantage of it. And that's something you should do in any survival situation. Take advantage of your terrain. No matter where you are, your terrain is going to supply something. If you're in the desert, it's going to supply uh, sagebrush bark and juniper bark and things like that. High desert of Central Oregon, great fire starting material. It's going to uh, supply dead juniper branches for wood. Out here in the forest, boughs. I'm surrounded. I'm surrounded by boughs for insulation. If I didn't have anything, I can make a traditional mountain man lean-to using uh, layers and layers of boughs for my roof, my bedding. I've done videos on that last winter for you guys. Check it out. Building a survival lean-to is the name. So no matter where you are, look around. Your terrain will provide something, even rocks. And rocks can be useful for making a fire pit or for warming the rocks and bringing them inside your shelter and using them for heat. And we need to do that in an upcoming video. 
So my terrain supplied two trees close together. This one had a bunch of dead branches sticking out, so I got a place to lean my pole. I'm taking advantage of it. I don't have enough cordage to do any kind of lashing. So I'm just gonna tie this using the bank line we have. And that's all I need. That's not gonna go anywhere. It's not gonna fall now. It's got a little bit of slack, but it can't come out and fall. And that's what I need. So I'm gonna get behind you guys uh, and do the same thing on the other side. Pause ya. Just tying this up and securing it real good. Okay. Now, rather than unpackaging a new SOL heat sheet, I have an old one, and this is actually my third year of using this. And I brought it because I just want to show you, unlike the Mylar blankets, which rip and tear so easily, this is year season number three. And I just keep folding it back up, about five times bigger than the package it comes in. But I keep folding it back up and using it each year. So what I'm gonna do I'm gonna spread this out and I'm gonna get, we, get, we still have a little bit of cordage left. Actually, probably another 10 feet of cordage left. And I'm gonna tie these corners off, put something inside here, roll it up, tie it off. Put these here, and then we'll stake down the back and put a fire in front. And I will have a place where I can get underneath this and lay and the heat from the fire will keep me warm no matter how cold it gets tonight. As long as I got a fire in front of me, this is going to do the job to see me through. Sorry about that guys. I thought that I had you paused and I didn't. So same thing on this side.
making the toggle, putting my bank line around it. Just tying it off with a double overhand knot. And this is what we have started. All right, so I need two tent stakes and I'll use the last of my cordage to just stake down the back corners using a little toggle again. Just finishing off some tent stakes. So as I was doing these on the stump, but I just brought them over here where uh, I could finish them off in front of you guys. So that one will work just perfectly. I'll square off the end because I'm going to hammer it down. And that just helps keep it from splitting. Same thing on this one, square off the end. I don't use the toil as much, I had somebody ask me about that. I, occasionally I do, but most of the time I prefer my hand to be right here on the edge. Just comfortable for me. So that's squared off. I got seven notch a little deeper. And that'll work just fine for our purposes. All right. Let's go around to the back. I've mentioned this tip before when you're working on wet ground, if you don't have any kind of pad or anything with you, just go ahead and put your gloves under your knees. Okay, once again, just like up on the top, I'm just going to take a small piece of wood and I'm going to roll that up inside here, like maybe two, two or three little rolls, and then a couple twists. Okay, see that? I now have a toggle inside there. I'm going to tie that off. Again, I'm just using simple overhand knots, which I can get loose later. Double it. And then I'm going to pull this back tight. Tie it around my tent stake. So I'm going to go ahead and just do that right now. Tying it right around that seven notch. Again, just simple double overhand knots. I'm not trying to do anything fancy, except for just get this done so I can get underneath it, get a fire in front, keep myself warm in this survival situation. So let me back you up a little bit. Okay, pull this tight. Tap it down some. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Now I have a little, a couple little trees over here and I don't wanna bother them, uh, hurt them. So I'm gonna work around the trees so it'll be some slack on one side. Okay. I didn't want to hurt that little tree. I'm just doing this for, you know, teaching purposes. If it was a real survival situation and I had to, I would move this little tree. So I actually just brought it inside here under the shelter with me. So I've got somebody to talk to. 
Now I'm gonna throw some debris under here. That's plenty to get me started. Uh, sit down and take a break. Get my fire started right here. And then let the heat come up underneath and start working its way around me. And then add some more boughs later to where I can stretch out under this. And again, my fire's right here. And the heat's gonna come in and it's gonna circulate around me. Now it's a little short for full cover if it starts to rain or something. But if I lay, you know, this position, then uh, I have no problem keeping my body up underneath here. And I've got plenty of debris. I can put a, lean a pole right here beside this and wall up this corner. And if any type of storm were coming in, that's exactly what I would do. I've got my tree right here on this side So this side I got a tree right here. I can use, put my head up against it, whatever. I've got some limbs sticking out here. I can extend my roof on this side, build a little wall on the other side here and take care of it. But uh, next step, kick me out a spot right here in front for a fire. And uh, most of the rocks are down by the creek and they're filled with moisture, so I'm not gonna make any kind of rock wall or anything. If I need something, I could make some stakes, but this'll be just fine. I'm gonna just use a rock to dig out a little pit to collect some of my coals in. And I'm using my gloves under my knees to keep my Pants dry. All right, let's get a little bit of firewood and get something going. All right, if you're in a hurry to get a fire going, don't worry about doing any type of a fire lay other than maybe just laying a couple bigger pieces on the bottom and then just a handful. I just broke these off of the tree right beside me and I'm just gonna set those on there and then I've got more to put on those. Got my cotton ball with Vaseline. Again, emergency survival situation. We're not gonna mess around with any traditional skills of making wood shavings, anything. We're just gonna go ahead and get a cotton ball out of here. Fluff this up. Turn the fibers inside out. That right down in there. <sighs> I 
Start feeding some wood on top of that. Some small pieces. That cotton ball is going to give us about seven minutes of burn time, so that's plenty. So I'm just kind of crisscrossing some small stuff. Flame's going to catch that. And while that's doing its thing, I'm gonna pause you guys and get some more wood. Okay, that's starting to go now. I've been feeding some more on here. Nice thing about the cotton ball, saturated with petroleum jelly, again, is it give, gives me about seven minutes of burn time, and that's plenty to start generating some heat. I'm getting some flames down underneath. And I'm actually going to put some bigger stuff on top. And again, I'm just crisscrossing it. Boy, you guys got a, all the smoke coming your way. Yeah. So let me get a little bit more wood and build this up and then move you around to the other side and we'll get in under the shelter. Feeding some more stuff in here. Kind of turn it into a little teepee now where I'm just going around the outside. And that is going to take right off. So it's still going to be a little while. Everything out here is wet from the snow and the rain but it is starting to produce some heat down underneath. It's starting to make some coals. So as this grows, I will spread my fire out into this area and I'm laying underneath that reflective blanket. It's over my head. And uh, very soon, that heat's gonna start coming up in here. All right, I moved you guys inside so you could get my perspective. So I'm underneath the reflective blanket. My fire is starting to pick up and put out some heat. That heat is going to come right up under here. It's right over my head and it's going to circulate around my body. And as this fire gets bigger, I've made that pit a couple feet long. I'm going to get some big stuff and lay it in here and lay in a pile of firewood. And then if I had to stay the night, have my firewood in here close to me and just keep feeding this fire and uh, stay warm throughout the night. And then whatever I need to do the next day, signaling, um, daylight, hopefully search and rescue, whatever, be out looking if you were lost, put green stuff, put up on top of the fire, put up lots of smoke, 
But anyway, guys, there it is. This is how I would do my uh, emergency shelter with just the last ditch kit and fire in front. Thanks for watching Ochoco Bushcraft. Take care, everyone.